<laughs> okay, we are live, guys. Hello, everybody. Hi. Oh. I'm here with you guys. Sorry, guys. I'm like all crazy right now. So I'm in the <laughs> super bill. Sorry. I need an aspirin. Um, and we're here live. I'm Lula Superville, and I'm here live with uh, Paul and Tiffany of Last Cast Podcast. Podcast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks, Lulu. No problem, hun. Um, we're actually really, really excited to have you. Um, I don't know if you guys can see your name. I put your names on here. It says Lube. Right now, I'm pressing Lube. 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 Which is okay. Because it, reminds, it rhymes with goob. So, yeah. <laughs> with goob. Yeah. Paul Tiffany with goob. That's all good. <laughs> oh, I love it. You guys are awesome. Um, so if you're just tuning into us right now on the live, we're going to give some people a couple minutes to get on. Um, but if you want to go ahead and share this broadcast, you can. Uh, you just click on the bottom right-hand corner to click the share button. And you know what? I Oh, I don't even have my phone with me. I was going to go ahead and share it to other uh, last group. Yeah. Uh, let me get rid of that. Oops, sorry. Oh, I we're good. Well, We're good. Cool. Yeah, I just I, I was screwing around with my Facebook. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, you're good. No worries. How yeah. are you guys? Great. Doing great. Good Very morning. excited to be here and ready for the next big conference on the on the horizon with this, which is your guys. Yeah, we're super, super excited. There actually are kind of a, a lot of other conferences before ours, uh, but they're international. Okay. Yes, they are. Um, yeah. Which I, we're not going international. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're really cool. Actually, my mom yeah. has been invited to speak at the, uh, oh gosh, I forgot the name, but it's in Argentina oh, um, wow. coming up here. I think it's in um, like before ours in March. And it's then Brows? it's a, yeah, it's a Lash and Brow. I believe it's a Lash and Brow conference in Argentina. And then um, we're also going to the Lash Extravagance in Mexico City in oh, also wow. in March. Very good. Cool. So March the, for the, your event, you guys are going to be running around going to other conferences. Oh, crazy. I'm going to be going crazy. And then yeah. um, there's another conference in Brazil in January. Oh wow! So, but we're not going to that one. I, I don't. I, I can't. <laughs> you guys can't go every other week to another conference. That would get a little crazy. It would be so fun, but yeah, definitely. Um, you have to pick and choose. And your conference, though. Oh my gosh! It was I fun. Just, <laughs> fun is like an understatement to me, okay? <laughs> fun is like not even how you would even describe your guys' conference. So if you guys don't know, if you're tuning in and you didn't get a chance to see all the mayhem that was on Instagram about LashCon, yeah. Paul and Tiffany here of LashCast Podcast and former owners of the Integrity Lash, yeah. um, you guys uh, threw a huge conference in Pasadena, California and called LashCon. And it was a huge success, and it was mainly geared to businesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of um, technique because there's a lot of uh, conferences already out there that really focused on the technique. And what we thought was kind of lacking, or there was a, a need it, for um, for practitioners, is how do I do business? What's the, the best practice? And so that's what we wanted to bring. We wanted to bring some business ideas from um, the larger beauty uh, world because lashes are so new, um, yeah. to give us that wisdom. It's not, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? So right. That's what, that was our idea. And the other part of the idea was to have a lot of fun. Um, so we had a couple parties in there and those were just like the best. It was so fun to connect with people and have a blast. It was really fun. I mean, I think from the get go, when you guys said um, you were having um, Allie of Lash Anarchist and her mom, Lash Bomb, do yeah. the 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 I guess the big party on Saturday night that Saturday Sunday night Sunday night yeah that was I mean that really got everyone's going they throw they throw the best parties I have to say so I, much fun I think I contacted them like within a day or two when we got back from Vegas because they had the best and just amazing Did, party they had IBS that's listening agree if you guys went yeah. to the IBS party in Las Vegas they had theirs at which hotel was it um it was at the Wynn. The win. It, was, it awesome. was so much fun. I mean, it was epic good fun. It was like more fun than we even imagined. And so, and between that and also, Barbara had an awesome party, oh, and we yeah, also so went cheap. to the Lash Veneer, had to get there for her following. And what was so cool about going to these three nights at IBS is international 
beauty show, not the international bowel syndrome, whatever it's called. <laughs> irritable. Um, irritable. irritable bowel syndrome. Um, <laughs> we found, we just saw three nights of just these connections of everyone coming together going, I don't get to hang out with last professionals all day. I literally spend all my day alone in the room working. And now I get to be around these people. And it was just like, we'd never seen each other, but we all felt like we were best friends because our pain points are all the same. We all struggle with the same things. It's the same issues. And so just to find someone just to sit next to and go, you get me, you understand me, yeah. don't you? And they're like, yeah, I get you. And you barely, all you knew was from a few posts on Instagram. So it was like really, really cool. So once we saw that, we really kind of refocused um, our purpose for uh, LashCon was to not just be about business, but also be about that connection. So, yeah, I called Allie and said, Allie, would you guys do part two? And they said, absolutely. And then we obviously, you guys helped us host the Saturday night party. Yeah, the Lashy party was yeah. so much fun. Which was also amazing. <laughs> and just trying to create avenues and opportunities for people to connect. And we even did that with the con itself. We tried to create right in the beginning of the conference, we want everyone's face on the screen. So everyone kind of saw who was going to be there. And immediately we followed that with Sheila Bella doing kind of an icebreaker to connect people. And then we had Tara from Lashpreneur to kind of lecture us and make sure you guys be good to each other. Like, you know, don't just waste this time and hide in the back corner, but the member to connect and really make an effort. So we really pounded that in the early part of the conference. And it really worked out. I think people uh, by far, the majority of people walked away with new friendships, new connections, and, and new people to lift them up and encourage them. So we were super excited about all that. I mean, yes, it, it, it was that and more. I mean, I guess for me, like what you're just saying right now, the takeaway, it really was about connection and uplifting each other because it, it, we are. We're, in a, we're stuck in a small room, sometimes working alone. I mean, our studio, we have girls so they can connect with each other. But for the most part, a lot of girls are alone and they're in a room and they don't talk to anybody. They see all these great people making it right. They're like yeah. making it on Instagram, but it's like, do you really know them? Do you yeah. like, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, there's not a lot of this tangible tribe stuff, this tangible fellowship where you can, you know, laugh and, and be frustrated about, you know, your, your clients coming in and smelling terrible and having to put up with them breathing in your face with that puff of air as, as you're trying to lash them. I mean, but being able to just have that instant camaraderie with somebody else was, was great. And, and, and also if you're in a busy salon like ours was, I mean, you still spent seven hours of that day in your room with a client. You weren't hanging out, you know, in the back room smoking with your team. I mean, it just wasn't, there wasn't time for that. Yeah. You ran back, you had your lunch and that was about your 30 minutes. The only time you would get to really see anyone. And often everyone's lunches weren't at schedule at the same time. So Right. Even with a business salon, you still a lot of times feel like an independent operator. No, for sure. I completely agree. Um, and I loved how, I mean, LashCon, you guys had all the different panels. Um, I thought that was really, really great. I wish, I, I mean, obviously it sucks. You can't get to every single panel and because it was yeah. three. It's like three every hour and a half or something like that. Um, yeah, we different had ones. five four panels. I think we had four total panels and it also allowed us to get, to get more voices out there because, um, <clears throat> you know, right now in our industry, we've kind of had a definitive group of people that have kind of defined our industry, but we really, with last time, we're trying to open the door to some new voices, people who, who haven't spoken at conferences before and people that you haven't heard, or maybe you've heard them on the podcast because a lot of the people there were podcasters like you guys now. So uh, it was an opportunity to hear some new voices and new people, and we really wanted to, and that's, by doing the panels, that allowed us to even more people to be part of the party, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I, I love that. And, you know, I I love listening, to, speaking of podcasts, uh, I don't, do you, were you guys able to listen to, oh, who was it? I just listened to um, Educated Artistry, yep. uh, Taylor and Kayla. Yeah, um, they, like they Kayla. did. So if we, I would love to talk to you guys about LashCon all day, but I really think that they hit it on the nail when it came to LashCon, their takeaways. Um, yeah. A lot of it I agreed on. Um, some I was like, oh, okay, that's okay. I, I get it. Um, but I personally, I thought it was all great. Um, and I definitely am excited for the following year. So yeah, go listen to that podcast and keep keep up with these guys. So if you guys don't know, I'm going to put up here really quick so you guys know who what their Instagram handle is. So it's LashCast Podcast. And also Lash.con. Now, you guys are going to change the name to that. Yeah, we got to change the name because a, a really big beauty company owns that name now. And this 
just by the way, this shows it's so it's really depressing when I think about it. I we came with LashCon at the name actually December of last year in 2018, and we knew we needed to trademark that name. But we also were struggling. Uh, people follow us and know that we were struggling with our salon. We had issues with you know we were going to have to close our salon. It looked like um, because of a lawsuit with labor dispute. So we were dealing with that whole issue while at the same time last, launching LashCon. And I kept saying, okay, I'll just file a trademark eventually, eventually. And then I went like March 5th or 10th, I went to finally file it. And I went online and saw March 1st, this other company had just filed the trademark. So sad. But anyway, wow, so wow. now there's a conflict because they say, you know, they have the right to use the name. And yeah. so we've been, um, you know, we've thought about calling it Lashcast, uh, Lashcon, or maybe yeah, just Lash Conference. Anyhow, we, we got a lot of names. By the way, we asked everyone this weekend for names. I got probably 30, 40 new names. I already have one or two of those. I'm like, those seem like no brainers to me. So, yes, Lashcon officially is uh, after one year dead. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Resurrect as a new name, whatever that name will be, we will let you know hopefully soon because we have we feel like um, we only had four months to market Lashcon this last time to get going. So we'd like to start earlier, so it's not so stressful and so crazy because four months uh, that was not enough time really to pull off an event. It was crazy. Oh no, you guys! I mean, I totally I'm in your boat right now. Like you guys did everything on your own, and I'm pretty much doing everything on my own with my mom. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, how did the heck did they do it in four months? Yeah. It's a yeah. lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Basically, yeah. it means you're just running the entire time. And normally, you you do your work at the salon, and you'd come home, and you, you normally would rest a little bit, right? Right. If there's something you've got a deadline. It's like, okay, no, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna work again for another five hours. You know? Um, yeah, we didn't stop. I mean, it was pretty much four months. We put our personal life on hold. Didn't really do almost anything during that time. Like not even going to dentist appointments, like hair appointments, like just put off everything in our life that we could that would distract us from LashCon, and so that we could just focus on that one task. And then, you know, sadly after LashCon, which is why it's taking me a while to get some things I announced going, is because the last few weeks I've been doing everything in my personal life that I've ignored. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. It's like we finally had to clean the house. So. Yeah, our house has been clean for months, and our car still hasn't been cleaned. By the way, we still need to take our car and get it clean. But anyhow, it's a small sacrifice. Yeah, these are the sacrifices you make because realize, you know, you you can't show up after four months of promoting this thing and and have nothing to show for it. You you it has to be out of the box. And we've gone to a lot of conferences that weren't last conferences, but other business conferences, and that really was the standard that we were were holding ourselves to. Is we wanted to strive to be like these other business conferences that we really look up to that have like a 1, thousand, 1800 people. So they're, they're huge conferences well produced. and well produced. Yeah. And then with that as our standard, we, we felt like we had a real high calling and we didn't want anyone went down because people were spending a lot of money. This was not a cheap conference to go to. So. Yeah, no, for sure. I totally agree. I know I look at like uh, Tony Robbins conferences and I'm like, I want to go there, but everyone's like a sardine. You're like sitting on people are sitting on top of each other yeah. in the aisles. It's like crazy. So yeah. that would actually be kind of cool, right? <laughs> that many lash artists in one room? Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> that's our hope. I mean, next, I mean, we had almost 272, 80, whatever it was this, this year. And we're aiming next year, five, 600 yeah. will be our goal next year, barring some disaster. But yeah, the deal's done. We'll be back same place with a new name, same conference, new name. It'll be awesome. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm excited to hear what the new name is. So guys, stay tuned for that. So I'm yeah. going to ask you guys really quick. So what did you do? to get so many people interested. What was your advertising strategy? This is Tusney's specialty. What, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, these are, all your questions. These are my questions. I'm <laughs> happy to be here. But she's here for moral support. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Because I look pretty bad by myself, but with her, you know, wow, look at this, this is awesome. In fact, let me just go off camera. <laughs> Could and you talk, just answer the question? Talk. No, I mean, basically. <laughs> For us, there, I was thinking about, like, there are a few things. I mean, there were some marketing things, and there were just some things that just kind of worked out for us, very fortunate. For, I mean, the big thing I, I looked at was the name. And one of the things that I've seen with a lot of conferences is they're, it's confusing of what they're trying to sell. Um, you know, and there's not a knock against them because they're sometimes it's because it's a, a language barrier. Like, internet, if you go over to Europe, some of the names are these big, long names. And as an American, I, I, I read them. I don't even know if it's a last conference. It's, it's more like a... And that's something that doesn't sound like a conference to me. So I really wanted to pick something simple. So we went with LashCon, which we bought for 500 bucks. And now I want my money back because we can't keep it. But that's <laughs> the fact. 
but last con was available so i bought the name and it was like i think it was just so easy you just heard last con and everyone immediately the first response was i'll be there like i didn't have to tell them what it was the name itself defined what it was going to be i mean everyone knows beauty con everyone knows comic con everyone knows all these are cons so finally I, I think for our industry it felt like oh my gosh finally we have our own con like unfortunately we're gonna lose that con <laughs> at least the, the name but at least the, hopefully not the spirit and so it was really easy to sell this thing to just put last con out there and people immediately were jumping on like i want to be there want to do it secondly also we really focus on getting different speakers and what you've seen from the traditional conferences the first conferences came on the scene around 2012 2013 and, and again, all these wonderful people have been doing these conferences, but it's been the same 15, 20 people now for like seven years and no offense to them, but at some point we, there, there should be another voice. I mean, we should have other people, there are other opinions, about other ideas. And while I think these other people's opinions are just are important and they've been leaders and influencers and we should learn from them, we should open up that tent a little bit more and allow some other people in. And if you looked at ours, I mean, really, for a lot of people, it was their first conference that they ever speaking to the last world. And we also grabbed people from outside the last world that were just business coaches or people really big influencers in their field, whether it's in beauty, hair, lashes, PMU, whatever. And by go going outside of the last world, we actually, I think, create a little bit more intrigue because people are like, oh, I've never seen this person. I've never heard about them. But this person, like our prior, you know, I think most people agree, Lance Courtney, the, our last speaker, was like amazing. Like, but he's not a last guy. He's not a last guy. He is 100% a beauty guy. He helps people with their beauty industry, with beauty businesses, with front desk, and all that type of stuff. And he's amazing. And we were so fortunate that he came to our conference to close it all up. And I think about a third of our audience because of travel plans and missed him. And But he was really, he had a grand slam. And that's the type of thing we're looking to do. We're not just going to have people from our own last industry. We're going to bring people from the greater beauty industry who've been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years and have all that world of experience to mm -hmm. share with us who've only been doing lashes maybe two, three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. um, another thing too um, is we really did something. This was intentional. This is something we've been working on for a long time. We had a podcast that started in January of 2018. So that podcast, uh, while it was not the very first podcast, the first one I was, um, what was her name? My mind totally went blank. Jade. No, 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 no. The first podcast, we were the first of the more recent in incarnations, but someone did one last last, last uh, radio or something like that. Not last boss radio, that's Shelby. But someone else did. She did for a while, then she went off the air, unfortunately, and then we felt came in in January. And our whole goal was to build up a tribe, build up a following. At the whole, I mean, we're very much following Seth Godin it's kind of philosophy is like if you build a tribe, then you can turn around and, and and serve that tribe through products and services. But you first have to build the tribe. A lot of people get reversed. They they first try to start selling stuff and they help to build a tribe while they're selling stuff. And right. that's a really backwards philosophy towards building a tribe. So while maybe someone goes to our page and goes, Oh wow, you only have like six thousand followers, we have really avid engaged. engaged followers we're not just six thousand people who just ha happen to find us and say oh i'm able to join them and follow these are people who listen to our podcast i mean we get like over five thousand people listen to our podcast now so uh, per episode so with that kind of following is a real a more engaged follower than just the average i think person who just likes a page and moves on to the next page just because they're supposed to like a lot of pages and yeah. so for us, we really served our community for a year and a half asking nothing of our community literally just showing up every other week with a podcast and then after about six months i started going on instagram and just sharing on our stories tips for a year just and almost three to five times a week just sharing tips so for that was like over a year of us just serving our community serving our community building up our tribe to where it got to a certain size and we felt like okay now we have something worthy of them to share that will help serve them and help them improve their business so that's when we really dived into our um, Instagram and, and, and a lot of people, if you look at our Instagram, you're analyzing it. There's a lot of things we did wrong with our Instagram. I mean, if you look at the last con page, it does, it doesn't serve the community in any way whatsoever. It literally is an advert ad after ad, after ad, after ad. Right. It's informative. It's very informative, but it really, if I were to go back, if I had more time, I would have created a lot more value content mixed in with the pitch to buy tickets every once a blue moon. Um, because I really feel like it's you need to give, give, give like Value. three times, four times yeah. before you ever ask for something back. 
But because we were on a tight time window with four months, we kind of threw that out the window and we came up with a strategy to come up, which we were going to do anyways with deadlines where the prices would increase over time. And then we did promotional stuff. And really, I think the magic for us to get so many people on board, aside from making it super simple for people being the name, um, also the speakers being different. And by the way, the focus being different, being a business conference made it 100% different than every conference you've seen before. So as opposed to going, well, it's another beauty conference where I'm going to learn about lash techniques. It's like, wait, what's this one about business? I've never, never heard of that before. And it wasn't just about marketing because a lot of times you go, oh, it's a bit about business, but 99% of the advice you're going to get is about marketing, about Instagram, about Facebook, right. ads, SEO. We were like, no, no, no. We're going to focus actually on the, the single practitioner and the salon owner. We're going to have tracks for all of them so that you can actually get tools to help you with your numbers, help you with budgeting, help you with scheduling, whatever. All that stuff. So we, by doing that, we kind of went against the, the grain. Like everyone was going this direction, and we went that direction, which has been always our philosophy when we build any product, any service, anything we do in our salon. It's always like, what is everyone else doing? Okay, we'll do the opposite. You know, so yeah, being the same really makes it hard to stand out. People just go, well, I've seen your conference, but there's 18 others like yours. So I'll just skip it and go to another one. I mean, there were two other conferences. One just before ours in, in, in uh, October and one also the month before ours. And both those conferences had 35 and 45 people. And it's because they kind of followed the old model, just post a bunch of pictures of all your speakers and you're supposed to expect a bunch of people to show up. And I think everyone's past that. People are done with just to post a bunch of pictures of speakers. That's not enough anymore. You got to do a little bit more. So the real, right. secret, I think for us behind kind of, I think marketing ourselves a little different and putting us our, ourselves in a different position and our name being simple was really using DMs in a way that, literally killed my day i literally <laughs> spent four to six hours a day dming people and it was really about getting people content asking for favors because again i've been you know i've been networking and connecting and supporting other people for a year and a half between the podcast and also just through dming and supporting reposting stuff for them and trying to get other people you know helping bless their 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 groups or their little programs that they're trying to pitch and sell and really giving to them and support them. So finally it came to us and hey guys, it's time for you to help show a little love to us. And so I would DM 300 to 500 people sometimes and specifically tailor a message, not always all of it, but like the beginning be like, hey, love what you're doing. Thanks for your all your support. And then I, I paste a, a kind of a, a cookie cutter section. And then I would attach graphics saying, oh, by the way, can you repost this? Can you repost this? And we had, when we announced last con, I think we had 150 people repost on the day that we post. We did, we still stole a little bit from Firefest, if you're familiar with that disaster from a year and a half ago. But thank God we did not fall down the same, uh, same route, road. But wow. Firefest was this big marketing success where they sold tickets to an event that was going to be in the Car Caribbean or the Mah Bahamas, I think it was. Bahamas, Bahamas right? yeah. Yeah, it was going to be it was this big event ever. And they, they sold it before they even knew what they were doing. And if, and if you want to watch an amazing documentary, go to either Hulu or to Instagram There's or to um, uh, Netflix and watch the, the Firefest um, documentary. And just it's a humbling experience. Just for us, we watched that with fear and trembling. Like, like let that not be us. I know. I know. <laughs> so uh, it really motivated, actually, us a lot to not go down that same route and not to overpromise. Um, something that we can't deliver, but also what we, but the good thing we stole from them was the idea of just getting a whole bunch of people in one day to post something about LashCon. So we sent a, a, a logo that said just LashCon, nothing else. And then we said, you know, we said coming in, in a day or two. And so I got hundred plus people to post that. And then two, one or two days later, we actually posted the details and then the, the, and we, I did the same post again. I went to 300 plus people say, Hey, here's the follow-up post. Please post this. Here's some copy you can throw into your thing. If you want something to say, and I, we were, people were so generous. I mean, I think we had a hundred to 200 people at times reposting their stuff. And then people just started picking it up. Like it started becoming, I think like cool to do like, Oh wow. I see it everywhere. I might as well, I might as well repost it. Yeah. So, jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. So it became a just organic reposting. So eventually my wall or my story would just be repost like hundreds of reposts in a day where at some point I'm sure people are like, okay, enough, Paul, I got it. You're reposting. I'm like, I just felt like it was an obligation for everyone who showed us love. I want to repost it and put it out there. But so we kind of create a big bang with that. Got yeah. a lot of people aware of it. 
Um, and so after that, then I just kept following up with um, giveaways. We actually rewarded our people mm -hmm. who would repost. We did some ticket giveaways with them, some discount codes for them. Uh, we did some fun things that didn't work. Like we did our, what was it? We did our, keep, we keep trying to do the scavenger hunts. <laughs> and, oh yes, yeah. I remember that one. <laughs> and we did scavenger yeah. hunts, we like them. We do like this idea of Instagram scavenger hunts. So we did, um, the five people would get a discount code. If they completed the scavenger hunt. We actually only had three people out of the five complete the scavenger hunt. So it was not a big hit. But they won. But they won, they got $600 off, I think the ticket for doing that. And that just got more people talking about it. So. Create a yeah. lot of fun too in the same process. So our, our posts were fun. But I mean, looking back overall, it worked. But I think we would have definitely wished we had more time yeah. and could have been more servicing people, not just pitching, 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 which is what we did for four right. months. But it, it worked out. Well, yeah, it worked out perfectly. And I, I love that. It, it, I, your whole strategy actually came into play really, really well for what you guys needed in that short amount of time. Um, yeah. Obviously, now you guys have learned what you guys should and shouldn't do and what you want to do differently for next year um, yeah. which is great and i've been totally taking my notes down from you guys obviously so i'm like oh my gosh what am i gonna do yeah <laughs> so we're here, you, know, you know you ask us questions anytime we're here to serve and by the way just to take this and think well how would this work if i were a salon or an independent person because obviously you're we were building and servicing last professionals and that's fine and dandy you're like well i don't care because i don't service last professionals i have clients in my neighborhood the same strategy can really work well in your own neighborhood. Everything from keep your name simple. Have these, I sometimes see these salon names are so long, hard to remember, confusing names. And it, you know what? Maybe it's also hard if it's if it's a word, but it's spelled unique. I mean, yeah, it's gonna be hard to find in search. Your you customer know, might have a hard time finding you yeah. if they can't even type your name because your name doesn't, you know, as a clever take on like a like beauty and it's spelled differently or something like you that. You know, if it's happy and it's spelled weird. But with know. I E E E or something afterwards, like, okay, that happy, you know, okay, that's cute. But at the same time, it's gonna make it a little harder for people to find you with SEO because you're gonna have to do some more tricks behind the scene to get that name to show up on happy. But that said, it's a simple name. Um, try to differentiate yourself in the market, you know, not just say, hey, we do lashes like everyone else, you know, finding that unique selling point, finding something that's unique about you. Maybe you have the, the cleanest salon, or maybe you're the fastest, or maybe you're the most meticulous, or maybe you have the longest appointments. We used to tell people, we at our salon have the longest we're appointments. The slowest uh, salon in town, that's what we used to brag about. Yeah, and uh, joke, okay. jokingly, but that actually got people's attention. Like, they're slow, right. why would they brag about that? Mm -hmm. So right. you find more ways to, to distinguish yourself that versus saying, we do the best lashes, because everyone, everyone does the that. best. Everyone says they use the finest products. Yeah, everyone, everyone says, says they're they best customer service. customer service. Yeah. The, the customer already expects that. You've got to figure out what it is that you're unique about. Yeah, you got to like, find other things that say you're different. Then last is using Instagram. DMs, I think people don't understand that interacting with your base is the real key to growing a following. It's not going on to other Instagram people like other last professionals. In fact, you're hurting yourself. The more last professionals you follow, the more you post on their walls, the more you're hurting yourself. In fact, if you're re if you're trying to build a last business, unfollow every last influencer except for the few that you really get inspiration from. Unfollow them and just follow a few people and start following people in your neighborhood. Start interacting with those people in your neighborhood. DM the people who have the mommy groups, the people that have a church group or a business group or any sort of local women's group, group women's business groups, group. business groups join those groups in and comment on their pages follow them and you will then start seeing the same thing where people will start following you and by the way if you give value and you're giving tips and your feedback and you're interacting with people in your local community then you can start asking for them to do the same thing we did hey by the way i'm i'm I, would you be willing to post a little promotion I'm doing for my salon? And you'd be surprised if you've been giving them value. A lot of these people in your local neighborhood will be like, yeah, sure. Hey, would you do that for me? Like, yeah, that barber shop down the street or that hairstylist or that gym or that um, maybe that dental office, whatever it is, they'll do it back to you. It's all about back and forth, you know, supporting one another. So while we did it on the last stage, and that seems to be the only model most people are trying to follow, if you're in the local stage and you're doing your community, you got to stop thinking like a lash influencer. Now, if yes. you try, by the way, if you're trying to be a lash influencer, then build a separate page. That's your lash influencer page. And then like everyone, follow us, follow Lulu, follow everyone and comment, do all that. But when you're <laughs> trying to build your business locally, stop doing, trying to be Jamie. Stop trying to be, you know, Allie. Stop trying to be these other people who are amazing. 
because that you're, you're not going to sell anyone um, your services by commenting on the Ali's post that are really funny. Um, right, of course, of course, and, and I completely agree. Yeah. So anyway, that's our that's our takeaway. Hopefully, that makes it a little bit more personal. Versus yeah, no, our, it does, and that's a great segue into like our the actually what I wanted to really come on to you guys to talk about is is we wanted to talk why shouldn't people use Instagram as their only approach to getting new clients or customers. So everyone's pretty much in a studio, everyone's in a salon. Yeah. And like you said, your, your, your ideal target audience is not the influencer in the lash industry. It is the person out the Joe Schmo next door to you. You know what I mean? And so it, you make, you make a really, really good point. You should be following them. Like you said, join communities, join your local chamber of commerce if you can. Yeah. Because those yep. women are all in business, um, or even men, you know, they're all in the business. And if another business can help you get business, it's just going to help you even further. Um, yep. So why shouldn't we? You guys used to, like you said, you had Integrity Lash. Um, so what did you guys use with Integrity Lash to, I guess, build your market? Because you guys had that way before yeah. Instagram oh, yeah. became a sales platform. We didn't. We yeah. didn't use Instagram at, at all. Well, I mean, well, yeah, there was Instagram. Um, 2006 is when we started doing this. So, yeah. what but, did you do? What was well, your? Well, this thing is not a sexy answer. Everyone already probably knows this answer, but the best source of res uh, referrals are is word of mouth, and that's what I relied on. I mean, when I first started, really Yelp was not too much of a thing. I mean. Yeah. Just was beginning. Two thousand seven, I think, was started. Yeah. There was no sales people involved with it. It was just a website, um, and um, so mostly what I did was just word of mouth. So if, as soon as the client was finished, I would say, "Let's book your next appointment," and I offered a discount if somebody sent me people. This is not super sexy, but I would give them like twenty dollars off or fifteen. You gave them gifts. You gave them business cards. I gave them business I mean, cards. Really unsexy. Kind of stuff, yeah. Very analog, Very, old school here. But you know what? A lot of people neglect the ask. You know, they and and also times they just let them walk out without booking that next appointment. I would just say there was just no part. Uh, there was no question about it. Let's book your next appointment. You'll ask right. them if they like the book no, next appointment. You say let's, let's book your next, next appointment. Time. And more right. times than not, they'll follow your lead. And then when you ask, by the way, you have to ask them over and over and over for the referral. Not just once. Oh, I asked them last time. No, no. Every time you ask for a referral. Yes. Because yes. how how did you ask for it? Oh, for the you mean for the for referral. For no referral. How would you ask for a referral? Uh, oh, like you can see somebody yeah. else? Yeah. Well, get little, someone to come see you. Like, hey, can you get someone to see you? You just go, well, hey, get someone to see me, or no, what no. do you do? <laughs> I'm gonna give you some um, business cards and what I want you to do is write your name on it. So when somebody asks, usually they would start to tell me about, oh my gosh, somebody contacted me at the bus or I was in line and this lady was like, look at your lashes. And she's she's having this moment where she's super excited and wanting to share that. I always took that moment to say, that is fabulous. Next time I'm going to give you some cards so that you can just hand them to her and then make sure, I mean, you won't know that she's coming in, but Write your name on that, so I'll be sure to give you fifteen dollars when she comes in. And then they get really excited. You know, sometimes you'd have a situation where two people would be like fighting over like the referral, and in those cases, you always just give an extra discount. Don't be like, oh, you know, don't don't nickel and dime people for that. But right. um, and I would do that every single time. I would say, is there anybody that um, you you know that would be happy with my services? And oftentimes, it'd be like, yeah, and I'd be here's some cards. I mean, just asking. You know, is there anybody that you know that would enjoy the service? I mean, we did a, a survey of our clients about a year ago and asked how they found out about us. Ninety plus percent of them were from referral. It was not. I mean, people look at Instagram as more of a confirmation that you exist. And I think right. you can grow and find a following using Instagram with some of the, the strategies I talked about with DMing and commenting and really connecting your community. But that's still, still, I think it would be a much less effective tool in the old app fashion, give out business cards, ask them to refer their friends because we said 50 some percent of the people who referred to us came from just a personal referral. And we were seeing 150 people a week, you know, 160 people a week. And we probably had anywhere from four to 10, 12 new clients a week. Mm -hmm. So we had a very, a lot of new clients coming in. Uh, we saw, you know, at times, you know, when we were not, we we're gosh, like five, four, three or four years, at 70 new clients a month. In the last couple of years got a little thinner, but we also were busy and full. So it was harder for people to get in. So there weren't many spaces. So we'd get maybe 30, 20, 30, 40 new clients in. But that said, 
Number one way easily was 50 plus percent came from just a personal referral. Number two was actually Yelp. The page that everyone hates is actually your best friend. <laughs> Yelp is easily, if, you, if you're if you neglecting Yelp or just want to pretend it doesn't exist, you are missing the yes. number yeah. one actually source online, I think, to find new clients yeah. by doing SEO on your Yelp. What's SEO on your Yelp? I can't go into all the details now, but basically make sure you fill that thing up to the brim with information about your salon. On every photo, post information, not just, hey, here are some lashes, but say, hey, here's some lashes from Pasadena, California, the best lashes in Southern California. Like, make sure you're putting all these keywords in all the photos yeah. and put a lot of photos on so that, first off, when you see a photo gets put on that sucks, you can push that bad yeah, photo right yeah. back. Just, yeah. We had like 100 photos or something like that on ours. Some of them are so bad, and you're like, oh, please don't Even the client that. meant and well. Like, oh, I love my lashes. And you're like, that's not a good photo. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all and... focused. It looks like, you know, Bigfoot got his lashes you done know, or something. I... So we just basically controlled that by putting our photos on, and you had to pay a little extra to get control of that, but we did. And so we put our photos on there, and we tagged them all correctly. And we put a lot of information and really we would get, we got 40% of our new clients came from Yelp. You know, another thing that you have to do with Yelp, just like when you're asking for the referral, you have to ask your clients to give you the review and don't be shy. It might take them like five, six, seven six, times, yeah. five to six times before they actually do it. it. It only happens. They only actually write it when they feel embarrassed enough because they've been telling you that they have. <laughs> so there's a key to this. One of the best ways to do this is like, when you give them the mirror and they're looking at it and they are super happy, you want to like hijack that moment because they're feeling wonderful. They're feeling great about your work. And this is the, the best time to, to do that ask. They're looking and they're like, oh, I look so fabulous. You say, would you, would you like to give me a review? I would love a review, you know, something like that. Would you, if you feel led, I would be happy if you left a review. You don't want to say, you don't want to specifically I mean, I think that Yelp has changed their rules, right? Before you couldn't specifically ask for it. So yeah, they changed. It's gotten easier to where you can ask now for but a review. Before but before you yeah. couldn't, so we can't mention the word. We, just we say would, online review. We would always say, if you are happy, we we would invite you to uh, uh, leave an online review. We wouldn't even say Yelp because we were really trying to make sure. But I think about, it's easier yeah. now, so you don't have to fuss with those words. But you you can you can say at that moment they're happy. You say. Would you leave me a review? It really helps me with new, yeah. new customers. And they'll say yes. And the next time they come in, you're going to ask them again. And and they're going to be like, oh, I haven't done it. You're like, no worries. No worries. It's okay. No, you're busy. <laughs> and you're going to do it every time. It's only when they get super, super embarrassed and they'll finally, they'll <laughs> finally do it out of obligation. Just, yeah. just keep asking in the most humblest way. It's about over communicating, doing it over and over, being persistent. Yeah. Do not give up. Do not get discouraged. Yeah, otherwise, if you're waiting for them to do it, they're not. They're I mean, not, very yeah. few will do it. Some will, but most need that encouragement, that constant kind of harassment lovingly. Yeah. And it works. And, and that for us, we had more five-star reviews than anyone else for our last salon in Southern California. That was such a huge validation for our work. And it wasn't by accident. It was because we were intentional. We asked and people would write reviews. And you got to do good work too, by the way. If you don't do good work, that's not going to happen. And the way we responded, we responded to any bad reviews, which we got a few, with grace and kindness. And we and accepted we, really, we accepted the criticisms. And even if we didn't think we did, we still would accept it because nothing looks worse than being criticized. And then you're online going, that's not true. You're not a real client. You're fake. And all that stuff that you see people doing. It's like, you oh. You were happy when you left. Yeah, you were happy when you left. Look at you now. You know, or, or I know you. You're a former employee who's just trying to badmouth me. Whatever thing they do, it looks super bad online. So and that's bad. not Nobody the way you believes, want. No, no one believes, believes you. Okay, so if you do get a bad review, it, it's really cool because people love the drama, right? So the way that you should look at it is it's a, it's it's advertisement. You have that person's eyeballs that yep. is going to be reading your that negative review, and they're going to form their opinion about you on how you respond. So one of the best things to do is like own it. I yep. mean, one of the things, like one time, I said, "Hey, you know, you Yelpers out there, we deserve this zero star review, and we deserved it because of this." Um, and, and we actually did, by the way. <laughs> yeah, there's one time, some, I think one of the times. Uh, but but real quick, anyway. again, the details on that. Here's the thing. People will always go, when they look at you up uh, Yelp, they do not go, oh, let's look at their best reviews. No, they, they immediately go to the bad let reviews. Me see the bad you reviews, click on right? lowest first, click on that, boom, all the low reviews it's go. It's entertainment, right? It's entertainment to see the drama it's and all that. Goes. And then you go through and you start reading. And if all of a sudden you keep seeing 
prick, prick, review, and then grace, grace, grace as a response. Like, oh my, like, gosh. Oh my gosh, this place is amazing. They refund the money. They take care of you, get you back in, they fix it. They don't blame you. They don't fight. They're, they're totally taking ownership. That's the kind of slot I want to go to because I can he, tell they yeah. care. That was our secret weapon. We cared. And if you communicate you care, that that will take you miles because most of the time when people get mad in their customer service situations that are not working for them, so they don't feel like you care. They feel like you're fighting them and that you're not really working mm -hmm. with them. So we always over communicate that we care. And by doing that, you win over their trust. You diffuse the and you situation. Diffuse it. Yeah. It immediately takes the hot air out of everything. One other thing that I wanted to share with you, and it was about like asking for referrals. One of the things that I did was I, I, I keyed in on specific groups. So you might get somebody and uh, she'll be talking about, oh my gosh, I'm a nurse and all the nurses because we can't wear like, you know, can't have nails. So we're always looking for ways to, you know, save time in the morning, whatever. What I would do is really focus on people that had a network of other people that they worked with. So nurses, I'd be like, I would specifically give out, you know, a deal for, you know, for them uh, or, or just put a little bit more effort into um, uh, uh, getting those people in. So nurses are good pharmacists, um, attorneys like yeah. that all work in, in a, like a city attorney. Um, uh, did I say Profession, any yeah. professional, professional, you know, law, professional. Law or other business owners. So one of the things you can do is here's a little tip. We, we would do golden ticket and, um, like I got a golden ticket, you know, Willie Wonka. Okay. So what you do is you take three golden tickets and we made them kind of fancy. We had some printed and we numbered them. So we came up with like 101, 102, whatever. And you're going to go to your group, your your nurses group, and you're going to say, I have just the thing for you. It's special. I can only give you three of these tickets because they're, I can only give you three <laughs> of these. All right. Um, I want you to put your name on it. And you're only going to give this to the person that has been admiring your lashes and you've been wanting to come in and they've been telling you, oh, I'm going to come in one day. This is going to help them get through the door because it's a gift certificate for like $50 off. And the cool thing about this, though, is that when they redeem it, you get a credit for $50. We give them a lot more than normal credit. Oh Normally, goodness. we did like $20 credit, but in this case, the golden ticket, you would get a $50 credit. So then they'd be like so excited, like, oh my gosh, these are my golden ticket. I'm going to get credit for this. And they they would be making sure that they would be giving it to somebody who was going to come in because they wanted the credit. So it's $150 in credit between three tickets. Yeah. So it was a good way to you get even, I think we haven't even gotten a hundred dollars. It was a big thing because it was like, it was, I think it was a hundred dollars off because our new sets were 300. So it was a hundred dollars off or half off, maybe even 150 and then $50 credit for the provider who passed out the ticket. And they had to make sure their name was on it. So then they brought in the ticket. We would look at the, Oh, uh, Katie Johnson re referred you. Great. And then we'd give her the credit and all that. So. Oh, and it, it worked really well in the very beginning with, um, as, as our status increased and our clientele changed, um, giving a coupon or, 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 or credit did not appeal to our, our ideal client anymore, right. yeah. but it, it, it does work. It, it so, works. If you have a, like a mid level type, if you have people making probably 50 to $150,000 a year, that type of clientele loves the bargain, the deal. Like they love, right. they'll go shop at Target. They'll go to Macy's and do something nice once in a while, but they'll also go shop at Target at the same time. The, we've moved into kind of a 200,000 to 300,000 plus range. And those people really don't like coupons. It's a status killer. It so is. they're really, really big on doing that. So it really depends on who your audience is. If you have kind of the everyday average um, Joe Blow kind of uh, person coming to your salon, great. That This is a great deal. If you have that upper level height, you know, makes a million a year plus, they may not be as excited about hanging out to the friends. Hey, friends, I got some coupons for you. That's that's not that's not what they should do but, at their cocktail but parties. But I think it's, it's, it's kind of <laughs> like an in-house group on. It, it is. It is an in-house group And Groupon. so uh, be sure, though, when somebody comes in to redeem that golden ticket, you treat them like yep. the queen. Oh, my gosh. Because if you're not going to treat them. Just because they're cheap doesn't yeah, mean they, does they get the second class deal. on the service deal. because they're going to think, why would I pay? Why on earth would I pay full price? This person sucks. I mean, they don't even, you know. So make sure right. that you roll out the red carpet. And then another idea to spin off of that, which is really, I'm going to probably ruffle a few feathers with this. A few people are going to hate this. You, If you're new and you're just starting out, Groupon is like actually amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I have actually seen yeah. great results even today yeah. with people who still use Groupon. Um, I had a friend start a salon in the last year. She did Groupon and she is now gone from one person to four stylists, like in six months, yes. fully booked out, full staff, busy with clients because she treated those Groupon clients like gold 
And while most people say, oh, if you attract Groupon clients, well, they're just going to go to the next best deal. No, they won't. No, they if won't. you treat them well and you make them feel like a superstar, they don't get that. They're so used to going from one cheap group on to the next and being told, you can only book us on Mondays and Tuesdays. Or, I'm sorry, we don't, re you can't redeem that anymore because oh, we sorry. that deal's done. We redeemed yeah. the Groupon ticket five years after it was over for us. Because it's like they're it's coming right through the door. You know, just roll out the red carpet, give them the best customer service. I mean, of course, you'll get some people that don't. Yeah, but, you'll get. But you know, you're, there are people walking through your door. It's the cost it's of fantastic. advertising. You're just going to pay advertising through one way or another. It's a really actually not that expensive advertising tool when you think about the actual cost of it to you, especially if you're new and you just need practice and you just need bodies in your bed to keep getting better and faster what you're doing. You're not going to do that by sitting around all day hoping people come in or just posting photos on Instagram. So Groupon is amazing still. It's a great tool. I know a lot of people hate it and think it's a bad way to go. but <laughs> no, no, I completely agree with you guys. That's actually how my mom started Lashes Del Sol in Tucson when she moved there for the first time. Um, she knew nobody. And so when she got there, she decided, well, why not do a group on sale? Like I need to start doing lashes. And so she did. And she grew, like you said, you, she grew from being herself to having a storefront in six months and then another storefront, her second storefront and another six months after that. And then now we have the third studio, like three, I mean, we did it for, man, we had Groupon going for about three or four years. Um, before we finally took it away, because we realized, you know what, we just don't need it anymore. Yeah, yeah. it's like um, and your brand was had reached a certain level where you didn't want that anymore. But when you're new, no offense to you, new, but you suck when you're new, and you're not that oh, good for yet. sure. So don't yeah. so we all we suck? We all suck. suck. So we all suck. we all suck. So the truth is this: you should be priced accordingly. And doing a group on lets them know you're getting a deal, and you're new, and that's okay. They're kind of looking for that, and if you wow them with customer service and with earnesty and just good hard work and just being caring. You're going to find people. We kept well over 60% of our Groupon people, well over 60%. Yes. The average is 20 to 30%. So I even think 30% isn't bad if you're new. Like if you're new and you keep 30% of the new clients. That is that's huge. That's yeah. still out. You, that means you see 20 new people in a month or let's say like 100. That means 20, 30 of those people are now regulars for you. I mean, no, yeah. you're going to use 20, 30 regulars starting out in their first month. I mean, that would be amazing. So I think for us, Groupon, well, it's controversial. I, we think it's a great tool still today. Um, and it, it just matter Now, if you're an established salon, like you guys too, there's a certain point where you have a certain level you're going for, and you're like, nah, this is going to kind of hurt our brand. I don't want to do that anymore. But at the beginning, you got to kind of eat, eat dirt and be humble. We would do that for like a new person coming on occasionally um, in the beginning. We yeah. might run a group. I think our first staff. four or five years we did it, in uh, yeah. 2013, 14, and then we stopped. In the last five no. years, doing it yeah, all. you guys are completely right. I'm going to tell you guys. So, whoever's listening to this right now, really take their advice for, for with for what it's worth. Because I can tell you guys, everyone I've interviewed, everybody I've talked to who has made it, who has become a salon or has done something with themselves to where they want to be right now, has said the exact same thing. And my mom has said it. You guys are saying it. You know, Jamie, a lash based Jamie, he said it in a recent post. Um, oh, Hannah this morning said it this morning. You guys yeah. there, if all these people are saying it, the, the, like you guys said it all already. Okay. First it was, you guys said, um, it was word of mouth. They've all said it's all word of mouth. It's that's the number one thing. And then, like you said, you, you kept on going, but it's how you make your customer feel when they walk through the door, how memorable of an experience do they have when they walk through that door? Are they going to want to come? You guys, I don't do lashes. You guys know that. Okay. I don't do lashes, but I've been in the lash industry just like Paul. Woo -woo, Paul, yep, you and me. I don't do lashes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're not in it, but we know everything about it. We know, but guess what? My mom's clients, they walk into that studio, they see me, and they feel like, oh, Lulu's here. Hi, Lulu. Oh my gosh. And I treat them like amazing. Like I just did it, what, like on Saturday, I saw uh, one of my mom's clients, a former client. And I said, hi, I hadn't seen her a long time. I gave her a hug. I made her feel special. I asked her about her health because, you know, she had, had health issues. And so I was just like, you know, she felt great. And she felt like, hey, Maddie's soul's still there. You know what I mean? Through mm -hmm. me. But I don't even do lashes, you know. But yeah. so it really <laughs> is about the experience. That's it, you guys. If you guys can't get your experience, if you guys have a hard time with it, if you're an introvert and you're like, oh, that's just not me, well, then you're probably, like you said, Paul, this is controversial. You're probably not in the right business. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got to start thinking about what you're really doing because the beauty business is not a quiet business. It is yeah. a completely make every woman feel beautiful and completely like talk about it business. Yeah. You got to be engaged. You got to be engaged and care and, and let that over override your shyness or your insecurities. Cause otherwise, yeah, you won't wow them and they will come once and then they'll go somewhere else where they find someone who really does care. Even you can't say, well, I'm just quiet and shy. and don't really seem to come off like I care. No, I was going to care with that. Sorry. You all didn't get a disclaimer. Like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Case, I'll be loyal oh, to oh, you. Yeah. Sure. Why not? So, yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it's not the way it works. You definitely have to get out of your comfort zone. Um, and I appreciate you guys saying that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know people, people agree with us. <laughs> I, I know people are actually sorry guys i forgot to let you guys know that users are interacting with us looks like we said someone says it's a great idea they wrote that a little while ago um and then you guys says you guys are so right all right cool. all right okay, cool Hopefully everything well, you. you said was right that would be even better but that's good <laughs> that's awesome so i kind of want to I, I had a ton of questions for you guys but i know we're already reaching up for like one hour here and i don't want to take too much time you guys are i want to get to bed that's by the way, if you can listen to our podcast, hour and a half isn't unusual. So you, we, we like to punish people. <laughs> well, it's good content. It's really good. So I kind of wanted to ask you for somebody who is, you know, wanting to get more advertising and really wanting to get that client, like client base. How much would you say they should budget for that a month? What is their budget? Because I know there's obviously we're, uh, we're not in the ways of like, you know, going door to door and cookie cutter stuff, you know, um, it's, they really have to plan for it. So what 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 did you guys do? I mean, I think in the beginning, if you're new, I mean, first off, print is dead. So don't waste any money on any print, print. on the coupons, on the back of the back of the receipt, the receipts, the grocery newspapers, store, newspapers. Yeah, that yeah. just take that out. Though. There's only one thing that's worth printing, and that's a business card. That yeah. I will say you should print. You should have that in spades. Never be out doing anything in the world without you having a business card, which I should take as my own advice because I always forget business cards. But that said, business cards will be, I still think, your cheapest and easiest way to get the word out and the least amount of effort. Um, I actually know, of a, I forget the hair salon right now. My mind just went blank. It's a new, more recent salon. It's exploding across the country and it's not a chain like um, the um, like um, Supercuts Super or something like that. It's a, it's a little more higher level. The way they go into town and overnight become booked, overnight, they, they they hire their staff, 13, 15 hairstylists, and they give them business cards. Right. And then they say, go out and pass these out to everyone you can meet. Like what for does a week. What say on the business card? What is the business card? I think card that you, now hair is going to be a little bit different than us. Like a haircut's cheap, right? They can probably do a haircut 30, 40, 50 bucks. Right. But it's for a free cut. With us, I'd maybe do it as like a half off. Your lashes or something like that. Do a group on them in a sense. Well, I was going to say. Like or, that, well, go ahead. Um, what I was going to say is more than a dollar amount. What what you should do is just try to be busy. I mean, and even if that means giving it away. Like if you're new, you just started. You need practice, yeah. and the best way to do it is to say, you know, um, I'm going to give this to you. Um, and as soon as I get up my skills, then I'll start charging. Yeah, I mean, if you're really new, like you, you she was free to begin. She would just do would, a facial, give her free lashes. I mean, let me do your lashes free. People are like, what's that? You know, I what? It's 2006, know. by the way. No one knew what lash extensions were. Yeah, I couldn't but, even yeah. make it a lash business because people are like, what is that? Right? Well, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just try. And like, there was a, a a trade association that I, you know, and I I had hours to to sell. So I would just uh, give them gift certificates, basically, and they would send people over to use the gift certificate. And everybody that walked through the door, I'm like, this is my golden chance. It's like I treated each person that walked through the door as if they were my last meal, really. Like, let me pour everything into I mean, not in a desperate, creepy way, right? But um, I was creepy. She was not. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'd be in the corner going, is there going to stay? <laughs> <laughs> No, you just pour into them. So um, and just giving it away free. I wasn't really too worried about making the money then because I knew that if they came back as a client, I, they would be with me what, making, you know, $1,500 a year or something like that. Or I, I could. Yeah. So um, I guess the, the point but, is. But the point is the, the business cards, I think is actually, if you really want to save money and not go crazy on ad spend on Instagram and Facebook and other places where it can add up real quick, Find those cards and handing them out, really going out around the neighborhood, around your work, 
or rent a ball, a place where people hang out and just pass them out to every woman you see. Generous discount. With a you know, dis just discount. Just come and try this. You try. know, or, or if you want to make sure that they're pre-approved, give them to people that already know you, just like the Golden Ticket. And this salon, getting back to the story, is literally they go into town, they do that for a week, they're booked immediately. All 13 hairstylists, slam booked full time. And then Amazingly, because they they're they're good at what they do, the people rebook, and all of a sudden, within two months, that salon is one hundred percent booked, uh, with with no ad spends, no inter Instagram or nothing, just simple business cards passed out. But the business out. card means that it, 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 it's free. The first that's for the haircut. That's for the haircut. So so it's it, it's an incentive. It's a big incentive. I think if you just give somebody a business card. No, no, it has to say what you're giving, card, yeah. of course. Yeah, I mean, on the card it says free haircut, or yeah. in our case, it would be right. $100 off of your lashes. By the way, when they come for that first appointment, I would give them another discount. They have them come back a second time, build up that habit, especially if you're new. Second time, hey, by the way, next time going, you're going to get your fill for half off. My price right. is normally this, but because you're new and I really want I'd like to serve you again, I'm giving you a little discount to come back. If you book now, I'd make it book now, not later. And they'll be like, oh, sure. I'll, but if you book now, you get half off. Great. Now you get them booked. You get them doing it two, three times, and they start building up the habit, and they start really liking you. You just got to be clear that this is my normal price. You know, I'm, I'm giving you this right now, but it's going to be here, you know, another couple of months. Mm -hmm. So that way people you know, don't, when you do go charge one, they're not going to be like, well, that's not fair. You're charging more now. Like, they no, knew all along. They knew all along. They didn't do that. So this has, they literally have gone. I've been in six or seven cities now around the United States and open up salons and every one of them has been booked out within a month or two. So call oh, it a great special or something. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Yeah. A grand opening special, something like that. Or if you're new and you're doing, you can just make up a new grand opening because you're new. Yeah. Bam, yeah. Boom. Today's a grand opening. We're yeah. starting a new, a fresh, and we're going to go out there and hit the streets and let everyone know. I think for, that's probably your cheapest way. You spend a hundred, two hundred bucks for for cards, and then just a matter of time labor, and effort. It's labor. Know? That's time. But you're not, you know, you're gonna. I think you're gonna get more return that way. Now I've heard re more recently. I've heard some really strange numbers when it came to advertising. Like, hey, you should spend 20, 30, 40 percent of your budget on advertising. No, do not spend numbers like that. 20, 30, 40 percent of advertising salons barely make a profit for the most part. I saw a stat recently that 73 all salons don't make any profit. 20 percent of salons break even. Only 7 percent of salons actually make a profit. So that's that's a pretty miserable number to look at. So going out and getting crazy on the ad spends, you got to be careful because you can bury yourself real quickly. So for us, we were spending anywhere from probably two to five percent of our budget was going towards um, spending for that. But we didn't have to spend a lot too because already we'd been around a long time. Most of our efforts were done in the early days when there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook, and there was advertising. We would buy ads, but they still, even back in those days, one didn't the, work too one much. One of the things that we did that worked really well, but I don't know if it pertains to today, is that we got a mailing list of people like at San Marino specifically could figure out what their income yeah, was. And I we, we, we gave them a, a postcard and for a free facial because, again, yeah. lashes, nobody knew it. But it, uh, it, it it, the climate's changed. But so. the advertising only works on repetitiveness. So just a one time mailer is not going to get people in. You have to hit them with six, seven mailers before they're going to finally respond. Same thing with Instagram posting. One paid boosted post is going to get you no results. Only way you're going to get results on Instagram or Facebook is if you post it regularly on a weekly, if not monthly basis, and just be persistent. The same message over and over and over, and eventually people will go, oh, okay, they've said it a thousand times, I guess I'll, I'll give them a try. So, I mean, I don't think Instagram is a bad way to go, and Facebook as far as paid advertising, because there's no such thing as organic reach anymore, really. So you really have to pay to be found, and or interact with people like we did, like I said earlier, through DMs and posting and all that. But if you don't want to spend two, three hours a day interacting with the world, then the next best way would be that hey, spend five dollars a day on Instagram to post and get people to that. So that's another way. Maybe if you spend five a day, you're gonna spend $150 a month. Not too bad, really, when you think about costs. If you get only one or two clients, you already paid for that. Mm -hmm. So um, that'd be I think something small like that, simple, and then just mix up the ads. I would try one ad, doesn't work, throw it out, try another ad until you find one that does, where you right. see some engagement and some responses, and then stick with the ad. You don't have to change it. Once it starts working, you can keep reusing that ad. For a long time or put into a, a circulation where you may mix it up once every two weeks you change out your ad put another one in and run that for a while so uh, but yeah for us i we spending a lot of money early is tough when you don't have money so 
Um, much like we did with uh, our social media, we didn't do much. Uh, we spent almost no money on Instagram ads and stuff when we did LashCon. And we spent very little too with Integrity Lash. We probably spent, like I guess, said maybe an average of five, 10 bucks a week or day at most. Um, and that worked. But otherwise, I think the gift, the, I think the business card still, strange enough, I still feel like that's the best and most yeah. effective way to get people to do it's true, and you know what? In a in a in a generation where right now we're turning into more of a digital media type generation, um, it's interesting to see how much of an effect an actual physical product has on people. Um, like 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 the personal note, you know what I mean? Um, sometimes you get an email, right? But like, if you get a handwritten note, you know, showing your appreciation, how much better is that for you as the, as the receiver? So getting an actual physical card saying that you're getting something for free, like, like, like haircut, right? Example, a haircut for free or let your lashes done for half off, you know, that is huge. And when some people, when, and it's actually, I was reading a book. Um, I love reading books. Um, the psychological effect of actually holding something in your hand is more powerful than just like your visual effect. So if you can see it with the card, if you can feel it with the card, and then you feel it emotionally from your, your lash artist who makes you feel wonderful, that card is actually your, like you said, your best friend. It is your yep. best marketing tool. Yeah. And as, a, as you walk around too, people ask you what you do. Oh, I'm a lash professional, lash artist, stylist, whatever you say you are. And they're like, oh, really? And they go, where can I find you? I mean, you should immediately be like, oh, by the way, here's my card. I mean, just, yes. it's a numbers game. What just, man, you can send that, you can pass out 100 cards a month. Imagine if you only get, you know, 10% return, five, 10%, five, two, nine, two, five or 10 new clients a month for a single practitioner is going to be great. After six months, you're going to be fully booked. I mean, it's right. not. It's not a lot of work. In 100 cards, you would be surprised how easy it is to get rid of them. I mean, it's not that oh, hard. Yeah. For sure. And you know what? They don't really cost that much anyway. You're like, where you can get a pack of 150 yeah. for like 10 bucks. This is a print. Just buy, don't buy. From, no, I hate to say this because I bought from local printers. And I like local printers. They're just too expensive. Too you got to go like this to print. It's so freaking cheap now. It's like, Wow, this didn't, I mean, it cost me like, like lunch or business cards. I mean, it's so cheap. So, yeah, I would definitely do that. Use the local, use Vista or some of the other ones. Look around. There's a bunch of them now. And you yes. can get less than 100 bucks and get a stack of cards. Exactly. And you know what? Someone's actually saying, I think this is actually my mom. She is saying, she's like, by the way, I love the gift that you gave us when we got to the hotel room. Aww. They were awesome. Yeah, thank so, you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Little local goodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, so I'm going to kind of retouch what, what my mom is talking about here. So what it is, is when we, we were asked to be on the panel uh, at the LashCon by you guys. And when we got to the hotel room, uh, you guys had a beautiful, or actually the, sorry, the reception desk at the bottom yeah. gave us this beautiful, beautiful basket with all these like Trader Joe goodies. And oh my gosh, like my mom and we were just so touched. We were just like, oh my gosh, this is, it was so wonderful. And, and like that whole aspect of the physical touch, you guys don't understand. Like if you're, if you're tuning in, it really does have a huge impact what something like that can do to somebody. Yeah. Um, so oh. that was, we really appreciated that. So that was awesome. Thanks mom. So Thanks guys. Enjoyed yeah. it. That's exactly. That was all her. Was. I mean, I'm, I'm I just, stressed about not. I didn't sleep for like no, a week. You know and Tess like, we got to give him some special. So special. And I'm like, you know, okay, we'll just we'll, we'll put a ball of champagne in the room no, or something. No, no, something girly, something fun, something, you know. Oh, like, oh, that know. candle, that yeah. candle is amazing. Isn't it great? Love it. Love the candle. Trader Joe started in Pasadena, so we decided to get Trader Joe stuff, kind of representing our local town feel. And and then Tesla wrote a hand letter to everyone too, because again, yes, we, you know, a, a typed letter saying, "Hey guys, glad you're here. Love, hope have a great con." Would have been nice, but Tesla was like, "No, no, no. Oh, I need to write a note good. to everyone. I got to do something that's really personal to them." So she spent uh, a whole night just writing letters yeah. to everyone. Yeah. So. Um, and then that, that for us, that was the minimum of what we could do. That just thank you guys for all that your support and everything you did. You did, you guys were and believing you know, in us yeah. and like saying yes before anybody else did. Yeah. And 
and and just being so supportive. So Lulu, you know, you and yeah. your mother are very special to us. I mean, literally, you guys are the first people we ever met from our podcast. We've listened to it. I remember the moment. It was yeah. in Las Vegas. At yeah, I too. <laughs> between booths and you're like oh my gosh i remember the area at the show where we met because yeah, I, remember, my mind. I just it's towards the, the very back side and out mm -hmm. of the booth you just hear screaming and it was your i think it's your mom because my mom, mom probably yeah. oh, yeah, oh my gosh, gosh that's the podcast and we were just like what someone what? knows who we are because we had only been to it for like six us. months and uh, it was very special. And we special. loved you guys, getting to know you guys, and, and you know, hoping to do everything we can to support you guys and your podcast and your conference. It's, a, it's like fellow warriors working side by side. We're pilgrims, so. right? On the march together. I like yes. warriors. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I know. And when my mom, I'm, I mean, we listened to you guys with your, when you guys first came out with your podcast. My mom was like, "Did you guys listen to this podcast? It's so good." And I'm like, "Okay, I'll listen to it." So I started listening and. You don't understand how crazy she went. It was like if Kim Kardashian was going live on Facebook, it she would go crazy. Like, oh, guys, guys, uh, uh, Paul and 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 Tiffany just came out with a podcast. You have to listen. You have to listen. It's so good. You have to listen. And then she'd go to all the girls and be like, girls, they just talked about this, and you have to go listen because it's gonna help you with your lashes. Oh my gosh, she was she's your number one fan, you guys. Uh, she's awesome. We love her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also kind of wanted to go back to the top uh, to what we were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, we were just finishing talking about budgets um, yeah. and how much. You guys, so that's kind of what you guys did. That's your two cents on what you guys, what people should do in regards to budgeting. Um, yeah. So what what did you guys do exactly for your platform? So which platforms did you reach besides the business cards? I mean, obviously you're saying yeah. that business cards mm -hmm. and all that. We really made sure Yelp, like I said earlier, was optimized. We really did SEO. We also, you got to have a website. If you don't have a website and the website has to be simple, they got to look at it and know exactly what you do. Don't make a mystery. Don't make it difficult. Don't make them read a lot of copy. Just to look on, see lashes. Like, oh, they do lashes. Easy. Make your pricing simple, too. I yeah. mean, I know there's people that do it based on how far the, the client has been away. And then depending on the fiber, what kind of lashes that they, it's really hard for the client to figure out what they, what they need, yeah. you know, or if it's some kind of a point system instead of paying, you know, you throw, whatever, just keep it simple. Yeah. We had our, our pricing was, we'd like to say it was like in and out burgers. Um, you had a new set and you had a fill. And that was it. There was no, and the fill was all the same, no matter what kind of fill you got. And you and paid the, for yeah. the time. And you so pay for time, hour and a half or two hours. Uh, an, uh, an hour, we called it a single, was uh, an hour. A plus was 30 minutes. So a single plus is an hour and a half. A double is two hours. A double plus is two and a half. Yeah, we kept it very simple yeah. so that pricing wasn't difficult. But mainly for as far as um, our ad spends, we outside the cards, outside Yelp, outside having a good optimized website. Then the next only place really ever spent money towards the end was you know, basically Instagram slash Facebook. And you, you can you need to set up a business account on Facebook, have an ad account. And then we would just spend, like I said, five bucks a day, maybe yeah. five, ten dollars a day. And we were probably getting um way we we mixed it up. So originally we would just advertise and put stuff out there. Initially, eventually we changed it. So that people would email me, um, like would hit, click on it, would take them to the page, and then they would email me their interests. Like, hey, we want to get. So then we would contact them. So it really helped us because nice. we would give a benefit. They're like, hey, click on this, and you would get a discount. So they click on that, and they'd get like a twenty-five dollar or fifty dollar discount to come in for a new set or something. Um, didn't know what to do discount. Sometimes we did value added stuff. So we'd say, hey, get free brow appointment. Or when we had spray tans, get free spray tan with a new set of lashes. We tried to mix it up because I didn't always like to do discounts because, again, that really hurts your brand if you're always discounting. Value added. So we generally, towards the end, we're doing a lot more value added stuff. But that said, you click on it and we would get an email and then we would actually contact them and say, hey, we, um, you, you said you want to get an appointment. We would like, love to book you. And that actually helped us, I think, weed out some of the not so serious people. The lucky lose. Because there are a lot of people that I think just click on ads and don't, don't do anything with them. And we really wanted to get people to respond. You want, yeah, you want engagement. Exactly. And we want their email, to be truthful. I mean, the truth is, your most <laughs> valuable thing you can get as a salon owner is a person's email. You get their email. Now you can market to them for the rest of your life. You don't right. have an email. 
you're never going to see them again. You, you know, texting is getting there, by the way. We'll probably be switching over to a lot more text kind of marketing coming in, but it's still 900%. But email marketing is 100% solid. And yeah. getting that email really made it easy for us then to put them into the queue. They got added into our whole automated marketing plan. And so they would get reminders even if they never came in and said, hey, we'd love to have you come in and try us out and so forth. So there's systems out there to help you set that all up. But yeah, we basically would spend about, I think, average $5 a day. And we were getting, you know, anywhere from two to five leads a day from that wow. alone. So we were That's getting a lot, not all of them booked, but sadly, not sadly, but gladly we were very booked already. So we didn't have a lot of spaces, but we got a lot of people from that. And then also we get phone calls from it too. And that was effective. So I think, you know, you don't have to spend a lot on Facebook. It's still relatively cheap to go on Facebook. Another place that I have, we didn't try, which I really wanted to do more playing with was Google ads. Um, Google, obviously, yeah. I think is actually in some ways even better because when people find you on Google, it's because they're looking for lashes. So when you type exactly. in lashes, you pop up at the top of the thing. Facebook, you show up, you know, all over the different place. Like you show right. up on the side, you show up here. And Instagram, you maybe you show up in the feed somewhere. But you didn't look, you didn't ask for that. You didn't say, oh, please, I want right. to see another post about where I can get my lashes done. So <laughs> you are interrupting people a little bit. You are getting into their face. And so um, I, from everything I understand from people I've talked to, you're going to get a little lower response. But if you do Google ads, wow, now you're, you're, now you're really smart because people are typing in lashes in Pasadena, lashes in Scottsdale, and all of a sudden, boom, you pop up at the top and they're like, oh, there's an ad. That's, a, that's a salon that does what I'm looking for. Maybe I'll just check it out. So exactly uh, the, the google ads i i we didn't get to do a lot of because we were so busy we didn't really need them but from everyone i talked to that's a huge, huge it's a thing. good one so that's yeah. obviously something that you guys would probably have done differently um and that's actually a really good one i've been wanting to get more into google ads and we did for a while in, in the past one thing i can tell you with google ads it can be confusing to many people um yeah. getting it all set up because there's i mean there's like different campaigns and different keywords yeah. and different categories. And then you have to, it's, it, it really is. And then you have to worry about how many like um, clicks you get because every click you spend a certain amount of money. So you're like, wow, what's your budget? Sometimes um, I think since I didn't know how to manage it correctly, um, I had set up a campaign for our studio and um, somehow we got like a $700 bill from Google wow. ads. And my mom's husband, because he's the one who does all our payroll and he manages the budgeting and all that, he contacts me and he's like, so Lulu, what's this $700? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so, you gotta be careful. You gotta be very careful with Google AdWords. You definitely, I would recommend, if you do decide to do AdWords, get someone who knows what they're doing, who can optimize who can optimize it the best way possible because if you're new to it you can learn there's tons of youtube videos on how to yep. learn how to do it but if you it, to get it done quickly and uh, like in the best way possible i'd recommend just hiring out and there's a great website for that um go to freelancer.com mm -hmm. have you i don't know if you guys have tried freelancer.com i know about it yeah yeah so you can hire out pretty much almost any gig contracted job you just kind of like a it's kind of like craig's work craigslist but for yeah like contracted work. So you're yeah. like, hey, I need someone who can do my SEOs and my AdWords, uh, whatever. And then you'll get like bids immediately and it'll give you like, you'll like say a budget um, of what you can, you know, you can afford to pay this contractor, dude. And they're yeah. from like all over the US, from out of the country, you know, India, whatever, you pick the person you want and they'll do it for you. And this is a freelancer is a good website, guys. It's not like some crappy, like they really, take pride in knowing that they have actually good contractors um, on there wanting to do your job. So it's not just some schmuck who's going to take your money and run. And a lot of these sites, they, they, they have referrals. So you can see feedback from yeah. other people. Who've done it. They'll tell you what work they've done and, and positive reviews, completion rates, all that type of stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of that stuff out there. And no, it is a great way. And it is kind of expensive or time-wise, I should say, to learn all that stuff. Yeah. You're not techie, is intimidating. And so hiring out, and there are also services out there. Uh, my experience with most of the services out there like that call you and say, hey, we'll help do your stuff. I yeah. found most of them are bogus and, and are just um, yeah. holes, giant holes yeah. that all your money yeah. sucks out into. So you got to be careful with those. But I think like you said here, hiring through freelancer.com is probably a smart move. 
Yeah, and, and this is and it gets to the point where you're the one doing the search, not some random person is calling you for your business. You know what I mean? It's like when well, you're ready to do it. And that's one thing also, like going back to your comment on Yelp, I know we have like a love-hate relationship with Yelp. I think everyone does. Um, but it's true, they do help out. And what people some people don't realize is everyone has an iPhone pretty much, right? Well, on the iPhone, you're either using two things. You're either using their Google Maps or the Apple Maps. Mm -hmm. And I think the go-to is Apple Maps because it looks very pleasing. It's very easy to get around and navigate Apple Maps. Mm -hmm. um, but Apple Maps has a contract with Yelp. So all every time you look up a business, if you're looking in an area, you type eyelash extensions and all those little businesses pop up. You're yeah. going to see the star reviews for that Yelp person. Mm -hmm. It's not through Google. Like you won't see the stars through Google. So, so people don't know. Like it's kind of like an oblivious thing. Um, yeah. It, but yeah, you're right. It, it is through Yelp if you're using Apple Maps. Now, if you go through Google Maps, it is. Uh, it's their own it review. So it's, it's yeah. Google, yeah, business being. They keep recreating, not Google being, but they Google can't figure out how to do the review thing. So they keep recreating their social media platform, which so far, one of the few things that they've done that doesn't work. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff, you guys. And uh, I wish we could keep talking, like keep going on. Um, I. <laughs> I really do. This is such good information. Um, you guys, if you guys have any other further questions, please ask it in the comments. Reach out to, you know, Paul and Tiffany. You can get a hold of them, you know, at uh, on their Instagram at, or, yep. you know, the Lashcast podcast or the Lash.com. You can listen to their podcast if you go to Apple's or Spotify. I'm sure it's on all the different platforms. Um, and and just Lashcast podcast. And hey, listen buddy. to them. Now that you put this out there, I'm going to go on one of my new pet peeves lately. And that is DM us and we will respond, I promise, within 24 hours, if not sooner. Something that our industry really struggles at doing, and I only learned this by doing LashCon, is that people sometimes take a week or more to respond to a DM or an email. And I always wonder if this is what's happening in our relationship. No offense anyone. I love all you who are helping us. Maybe it took a long time. I get it. We're learning to communicate here. But right. if you're treating your clients like that, they're going to go somewhere else. They're just not going to stick around. They're going to go somewhere else and find someone else who responds in a timely manner. You are losing business every day. You do not DM or respond to an email or a phone call within a not even one day. I think 24 hours is almost too much. It's almost like same day. Like get back to that person. If you want to win a client over or a new client, respond quickly. That's how you're going to build trust and begin to build that relationship. So that's my last little tip for today. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I'm definitely going to want to talk to you guys more as we keep getting closer to our conference, the Scottsdale Lash and Brow Conference. And I know, Paul, you're like, it's a long name. It's a long name. I know. <laughs> okay. I know. Long content. Lots of good content. But you know what? It's, there's not one way to do anything. That, that no. Works well. you, there's so. many ways to skin a yeah. cat. We're not supposed to say not say that. We're, we're not going to hurt any more animals many, in our many language. Ways to, uh, <laughs> yeah. Pop a balloon. Pop a balloon. Yeah, there's sure. so many ways to pop a balloon. There you go. That's a yeah. good one. <laughs> That's good. So yes, they're going to be speakers. So you guys uh, at the at our Scottsdale Lash and Brow Conference, you guys, you're going to want to definitely uh, go, go there. They're going to be talking all about customer service. They know their stuff. Um, please contact us. Like I said, Scottsdale Lash Brow Conference. Join us. You can join them at, at uh, uh, Lashcast Podcast and Lash.com. I am Huga Beauty Co. And uh, I know. Woohoo! Uh, and anyway, thank you guys so much. I appreciate your guys' time. Yeah. We, we love, love it. We love you guys. Thank Mwah. you. Mwah. Thank you guys. Have a great night, and we'll see you later. All right. You. you too. Goodbye. Okay,